This video looks at how rebound angle of a ball stunned into a cushion varies with incoming angle, speed, and conditions. All angle values reported are measured relative to the rail perpendicular, so zero degrees would be straight into the rail. This first angle is at 65 degrees, which is fairly shallow relative to the rail. At each angle will vary both speed and conditions. This first shot will be at fast speed. To simulate slick conditions, we use a second ball that is polished with silicone spray. To ensure a stun, we use a frozen combo with only a small gap to the cushion nose. The rebounding ball doesn't have time or distance to develop partial roll, even at slow speed. Here's the first shot. We show the rebound angle line in different colors for each shot based on speed and conditions. Yellow will always indicate typical conditions at fast speed. A super slow motion top view is used to show the initial angle and induced spin after rebound. Here's the same shot at slow speed, which we indicate by the color red. At this incoming angle, the slow speed shot rebounds at very close to the same angle as the fast speed shot. In the top view, you can see that the slow speed shot does not compress the cushion or slide down the rail as much as with the fast speed shot. The next two shots are with the polished ball showing the effects of slick conditions. This first shot is at fast speed, indicated by green. Here you can see that the ball rebounds significantly longer with slick conditions. Slow speed shots in slick conditions will always be shown by blue. The slow speed shot with slick conditions rebounds even longer. This could be caused in part by the small amount of forward spin the ball picks up on the way to the rail at the shallow angle and slow speed. Forward spin makes the ball curve forward after rebound. If you look closely, you can see the slight curve. Here we compare the initial rebound angle for each of the four shots. As we just saw, the slow blue path goes longer than the fast green path, but the initial angles don't suggest this in the top view. This clearly shows that the blue path must curve forward beyond the view shown. Now we're shooting the four shots from 45 degrees. Again, with slick conditions, the ball rebounds longer. At this angle and slick conditions, the rebound angle is very consistent with different speeds. And here are the four shots at 15 degrees, a much steeper angle into the rail. Here the rebound actually goes a little bit shorter at the slower speed. Notice how the ball picks up top and counterclockwise spin after rebound. 
The top spin is about an axis parallel to the cushion, which causes the rebound path to curve slightly to the short side. As with the other angles, the ball rebounds longer with slick conditions. Let's summarize some conclusions from the video. Firstly, both the incoming angle and conditions affect how rebound angle changes with speed. Secondly, with faster speed and shallow or large angles into the rail, the cue ball slides and shifts down the rail farther before rebounding. Thirdly, with slick conditions, the ball rebounds longer. Finally, a ball stunned into a cushion curves shorter only a small amount after rebound, especially at steep or small angles into the rail.